Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about units and measures, which is a category in measurement and data questions. This video is going to focus on the topic of time. Time questions involve anything and everything which centers on time. It may include periods as well as time delays and different time zones. Be careful with conversions, especially when converting from 24 hour to 12 hour time. 24 hour time will contain four digits ranging from uh, 0000 to 2400 to 2359 where 1200 refers to noon. 12 hour time will have AM and PM labels and will only range from 1 to 12 where noon is referred to as 12 PM. The abbreviation AM refers to ante meridiem, which is Latin for before midday, and PM refers to post meridiem, which is Latin for after midday. Time questions can range from determining time using a clock to working with multiple time differences across the world. Okay, so because time is such a prevalent thing in everyday life, it's very important that we do get a good hang of the concept of time. So questions involving time can vary quite a fair bit because we've got, uh, since time is so prevalent in everyday life, we've got so many different ways of telling the time. So one of those methods is how we actually represent the time. And that can be in either a 24 hour format or a 12 hour format. Now the 24 hour format has the advantage of knowing exactly what time in the day it is just by looking at the number. So for example, if it's three o'clock and it's time to go home, the time would be 1500. And because the number is bigger than 12, which refers to noon, we know it's past noon and it's sometime in the afternoon. Now we can very easily convert from 24 hour time to 12 hour time and vice versa, because from if you're using 12 hour time to 24 hour time, All we need to do is add 12 to the number and we get the result, assuming that we are working with PM. Now, if we have 24 hour time, we wanna go back to 12 hour time, then all you need to do is minus 12 hours and you get the answer in PM. If we are working in AM, however, so it's, we're in 12 hour time format, but the time is in the morning before noon. Then to get to 24 hour time, all we need to do really is add a zero in front, in front of the hour. So for example, if time is 3 a.m. in 24 hour time, that would just be 0300. 24 hour time also usually doesn't have the little dot dot you have for what we usually use in 12 hour time where we would represent it as 300 AM. That's just a writing convention. So try to include that whenever you're using these formats. So now that we understand how 24 hour time and 12 hour time works, the other thing that we do need to take care of is the fact that we have different time zones across the world. And that's just because the earth is constantly rotating. So if this is the earth, it's rotating this way and the sun is facing us. So there's always going to be a side where it's nighttime and there's always going to be a side where it's daytime. So to accommodate for that, we have what's called time zone. So that just tells us what time of the day it is. So if it's nighttime or daytime, depending on where uh, a country is on earth when it's spinning around um, and facing the sun. So it's, it's very helpful when we want to know the time in different countries. Now, when we're working with those, obviously there's going to be countries where it's a bit ahead the time is ahead of another country because of its placement on earth or there are times where it's actually behind another country again due to the placement of the country on earth so we very need to be careful of those things when we consider time finally the last thing would be that we have various different ways of telling the time as well. We've obviously got things like the traditional clock where we've got a minute hand and a hour hand, which is the longer one 
and the hour hand is the shorter one. And those hands are used to tell the time depending on what um, uh, what number the hands are pointing towards. But we also have digital time. And that is honestly a much simpler way of telling time, but we can't ignore the fact that we used to tell time for hundreds of years using an analog clock. So the digital clock, thankfully, just tells us the exact time in Arabic numerals like so, but it is always a task to be able to read a um, analog clock and be able to interpret what time it's telling us. Now, with all that at the back of our minds, let's see if we can understand this example question. In this question, which says the time in Los Angeles is 17 hours behind the time in Sydney. If plane departs on Saturday at 8.12 a.m. in Los Angeles and the trip is 15 hours long, what is the local time when the plane arrives in Sydney? Okay, so for time questions involving time zones, it's always easy to work with only one local country's time and then do all the calculations with that time and then convert at the end or convert immediately to the to the different country's time and do all the calculations like that. So what I'm saying is that you only want to do the conversion of the time zones once so we don't really get confused with all the numbers that's going on. So you'll see what I mean by going through the example. Uh, we The question says in Los Angeles, so LA, the time is 17 hours behind Sydney. So if we say it in the other way around, Sydney is 17 hours ahead of Los Angeles. Now, the plane departs on Saturday at 8.12 a.m. And the trip is 15 hours long. So when we do the addition of the 15 hours, we still want to maintain the time in LA time. So all we do is add on the 15 hours to 8.12 p.m. So this is going to be 2312 or 1112 p.m. Um, and that's still in the same day. So let's say Saturday. Okay, so this is, however, the time in LA time. However, the question wants us to figure out what is the local time when the plane arrives in Sydney. So we obviously need to figure out what time it is in Sydney. So to convert to Sydney time, we know the time is 17 hours ahead of Los Angeles. So even though the plane arrived at 11, 12 p.m. in LA time, we actually need to convert that by adding 17 hours to the, to the departure time, sorry, the arrival time. So if we add 17 more hours to 2312, the way I usually do these types of calculations when a day actually changes is that I simply use 24 hour time so 23 plus 17 gives us 40, 12 as 24 hour time. But obviously it doesn't make sense for it to be 40 o'clock since that doesn't exist. So what you do then is take away 24 hours to convert it back to the correct time. So that gives us 40 minus 24 is equal to 16. Now, the reason you take away 24 is because there's 24 hours in a day and we don't want the number to be any bigger than 24. So doing that converts us to the correct time, which is 1612. Now, since that is in 24 hours, let's convert it back to 12 hour time by taking away 12 hours. And that gives us 412 p.m. Since the number was bigger than 12, we know it is in the afternoon. And we also know that it is the next day after Saturday because we had the additional 24 hours. And also conceptually, if it's very close to midnight and we add 17 more hours, then it's obviously going to be the next day. So this is going to be on a Sunday. So if we're looking for 4, 12 p.m. on a Sunday, let's take a look at the answer options. All the numbers look very similar, so be very careful when you select the correct answer. We're looking for PM and we're looking for Sunday. So the only correct answer option is option A. 
Okay, so that was the video all about the techniques you may use for time-related questions. It's always going to be very important that we pay attention to the small details that the question provides, things like what time it is, um, is it using 12-hour time, 24-hour time, what day are we talking about, things like that. And it's also very important to realize time, time zones are going to be different for different countries. So that brings this video to a close. Thanks everyone so much for watching.